by combining all sorts of different powers, as well as a couple of relics. This run had no shortage of damage in the late game. What a fun time. But to start... The Sun. Oddity says, which character has the most and least different build types? Oh man. That's a very good question. Most feels like it has to be defect. There are so many janky ways to get defect to win. Or m m perhaps most of the ways to get defect to win are janky, perhaps is the other way to phrase that. I sometimes name defect as my favorite character in part because it seems like there are so many unique ways to victory with that character. Although many of those paths are uh, very narrow and fraught with danger. As for least, hmm. I think some might be inclined to say Watcher, but that's really not that true. Watcher has a very small handful of extremely successful strategies that you can perform very well simply by staying within, just doing rush down, cut through fate, small deck builds. But Watcher has a very wide variety of strategies that can be successful and a whole lot of different types of deck that she can build. Some of them aren't as successful as the, uh, the mainstays, at least on A20 Heart, but especially on the lower difficulties, she has a lot of different viable tools. In fact, almost every card, I think, is is quite valuable. So it has to then be either Silent or Ironclad that would be most restricted, but I don't know who I would name between the two there. Super Prismatic Shard mod. I'm going to go unmodded today. Keep it within the, the confines of the vanilla game, but expand our choice making a little bit. Wait, am I on the right save file? Hold on. Yeah, we're on Baylor A20. Okay, I guess I just didn't uh, get out of Act 1 last time we played Silent. You know, that's fine. That's completely fine. We might even get a free Elite here, actually. If we want to take Niao's Lament, I could see either of these Elites being not too bad to get to. We could even do three events, one combat into this Elite. And we can take several elites afterwards. There's a guardian at the end of the act waiting for us. Actually, yeah, I do like Niao's Lament in this position. I can't remember if I did the seed of the week on this play, uh, on this save profile or not. Anyway, we'll take uh, Niao's Lament to start out our silent today. No jawworm trouble for us. How about a blade dance? Blade dance first card seems perfectly fine to me. Definitely am a backflip enjoyer going into Guardian, but gotta get the damage first, I think. And upgrade two cards for minus 20 health. I think that's worth it here. Any chance of more slice and dice tomorrow? Yeah, reasonable odds of that. Definitely going to be playing some more Slice and Dice. Erebus Darkstar. Thanks for nine months. Speaking of Slice and Dice, Erebus picked up Slice and Dice after stream the other day and am newly obsessed. Good. All right, we get Survivor upgraded. I'm actually really happy with paying 20 health for those two upgrades. That's a, that's a premium one right there. And there's an on-sale footwork here. I buy. I buy the footwork. We bid farewell to Akabeko. Farewell to Clockwork Souvenir. Do I want to buy a flying knee? I don't think so. Not if my elite's free. Let's go to the next floor. We get another event. Cleric can heal us for only 35 gold. I might as well take that. 
And then we should be all set to fight two more elites this act. Good. I think that means we want to take another combat before the elite just to get the reward here. What would I say makes a rare card rare? Says Aina Rain. Rare cards tend to fall into one of three categories. They are either a card that has a single use that is just straight up better than other cards, like um, Adrenaline or Die to Die or Offering or... I'm trying to think of a defect one. Hyper Beam in a way. It's not an exhaust card. Reboot is kind of in that category. Or they're an expensive power that has a really strong effect. Yeah, Alchemize is a good one. Um, Core Surge is another good example of a one-time use better than other cards. Core Surge really falls into that category. So there's also expensive powers, you know, the form cards, Juggernaut, stuff like that. And then the third category of rare card is weirdly conditional card that's hard to use. And that's where most of the odd ones fall into. That's where your Berserk is, your, your Double Tap, your Amplify, your Fission. A rare, a card that has, oh, your Barricade. Barricade is both of those things, actually. Alpha, Conjure Blade, Meteor Strike. So it's either it's, it has to be very powerful in some way, and it achieves this by being single use or expensive or conditional. I guess is well, maybe a more condensed way to say all that. Power at a cost is what rare cards are. Emery Sage, thanks for the prime sub in the five months. Unload seems like none of those things. Yeah, well, let's unload. Unload has an upside that feels like a downside. Discarding all your other all your non-attack cards. Do I think I could beat Ascension 1 blindfolded using only audio cues? I don't think so. I don't think there's enough to differentiate cards. Um, we did have a vision impaired. Chat member mention using a screen reader to make the game playable without relying on vision. So I think if I had some kind of screen reader for the card text, then it would be possible. But otherwise, I wouldn't be able to tell what cards I was clicking on. I, I don't think that would work out too well. Have a good day, says Cleric. I will have a good day. Cleric. Which Spire enemy do I think would make the best roommate? So I can't say Cleric here. Hmm. I think Giant Head would make the worst roommate. Who would make the best roommate? A champion. Champion's also a terrible roommate. You call that a workout? That's a tough choice here. I like a masterful stab and backflip a ton in this position. With footwork and two upgraded block cards, I think we're we're always paying zero for this. Really want a backflip though, and I do get another card reward. I have a good potion. I'm going to take this back flip. What about a mod that made enemies and their intents invisible? You'd have to use your game knowledge to discern what you're up against. That's a cool one. Yeah, if you just made a, a certain part of the game invisible, I think it would be doable. Neuer Chat, thanks for the five months of support. 
or maybe if just your cards were like face down or something, there would be a way to uh, to make that work too. Boat thingy, love boat thingy. And here's a card that's just better than other cards. Adrenaline. Gain an energy, draw two cards. Sure. I do need more damage, but sure. Yeah, we, we do have to upgrade our damage pretty badly here. Uh, and I think for the first elite, upgrading Blade Dance is really our only option. Probably going to use the Cultist Potion against this first... Well, it's the, the first real quote-unquote elite. And since we, if we don't get an attack card from this combat, it's going to be pretty tough, actually. So we better upgrade the Blade Dance to make things a bit less hectic. Upgrading Footwork can wait for a while. There is no need for Foot... Whoops. No need for Footwork upgrade. Alright, we'll play the Footwork. Lock 7. Would I ever not take a free Adrenaline if they keep getting offered? I feel like there has to be a, a point at which you stop taking them. Even if it, the limit is somewhere around 20. Because you do have to worry about... Um, I meter and uh, heart. And if you can play every card in your deck in one turn, you probably have enough of them. So this choke's actually not bad. We have Adrenaline Blade Dance Plus. Let's do it. I like when this card is actually decent damage. And we are looking for more damage with Gremlin Knob surely around the corner here. I'm not going to not fight the Elite, so I'll just take a choke. It's able to remove artifact from enemies. Uh, and if Whetstone upgrades it, it does not, then it would hit uh, even harder. It is sentries first, though, but we that doesn't stop me from choking, as they say, a bitch. Well, I guess that's not really what they say. That's what Wayne Brady says, just to be clear. Blame it all on Wayne, that's right. And I will, thank you. Hmm. Might have to Swift Potion. Or I could take 10. I'm going to go to the fight before the next elite. I'm not going to the shop. Is that correct? Unless the event gives me a load of money. That's correct. Okay. Did that actually help me? I don't think so. No, I needed to also draw the neutralize. Oh, well. Uh, that is fine. It's still better damage than just... Strike Blade Dance, I guess. Oh well. And now it's in the quote bot. Thank you, Faley. For your contribution to the arts. get mummified hand okay that's a pretty cool relic now powers make cards free that's gonna make choke better too regen potion to make up for the incident and an attack card either dagger throw or all-out attack 
This deck does not have a way to deal damage to multiple enemies, so I actually quite like all that attack here. Good against uh, Act 2 encounters. And its upfront damage allows it to deal with Grumlin Knob pretty well also. <laughs> yeah. These quotes that I don't remember saying are pretty good, actually. Do enjoy. So we're getting entangled, huh? Hmm. I'm wondering if I use the regen potion here. I think I should have used it last turn. But now that we know the fight is going to go on for at least three more turns, seems kind of reasonable. So let's do it. You're not even making me vulnerable. Perfect. Missed the two and the one. That's okay. There's a 30% chance we get another potion right now. We can take Endless Agony, Acrobatics, or Sneaky Strike. I like the Endless Agony to go with Choke. It's also just decent upfront damage, in my opinion. And yeah, we didn't get enough money for me to want to go to a shop here. Let's take the Agony. And then maybe we can add some more draw shortly. I want to get you as close to 35 as possible. Let's see here. The so 36 is good. Don't play this shiv. And then we just choke strike. And then hopefully we can kill at least one of the spawn next turn. We deal 21, brings it to 15. The so agony strike strike would work. Or I block for 9, take 4, and try to set up a better split. It's not going to be better. The only thing good here would have been lining up Choke with one of the cantrip cards, the Agonies of the Adrenaline here. But we get the worst of all possible worlds. Don't draw two defends, don't draw a kill. So we do get slapped. Nothing we can do about it. Only got 14 damage here. Taking five isn't the worst thing though. That's not the worst thing. How's it going, Despot? Life has been pretty good. Playing some four fun runs today. Just kind of looking to have a good time with the Spire. And so far, we're off to a very good start here. With uh, our silent run. Got Choke going on. That could be fun. Is Choke good enough reason to take a distraction? I don't think so. Maybe if distraction was upgraded for free, I might consider it, but I don't think so. And would you look at that? All that consideration for Gremlin Knob, and then he doesn't even have the decency to show up in our run. What am I supposed to do now? 
Do I want to make this fight easy with the Cultist Potion? Do we save that for Guardian, or do I save it for Book of Stabbing? Regardless of the answer, I don't think we wake up the Legavulin on turn one here. In what situation is Pandora's box a good choice? You're getting more than six transforms. It's almost always a good choice. As you note, it usually feels like the deck is missing something after you take a Pandora's box. And this is upon you, the player, to fix. Uh, my usual assertment is that every Pandora's box, you want to remove two cards and then add two more cards to, to fill in what you didn't get. Um, but what you, what you should be considering with the Pandora's box is what you did get. If you didn't get any block, what did you get? You must have gotten lots of powers or lots of damage, and those are things you can use to really advance your position in fights. Usually, replacing your strikes and defense with the random cards is going to be an upside. You can definitely have an awkward assortment of cards, which can certainly make the early bits of an act awkward after taking one. But if you can find some cards to add to make up for any deficit you've acquired, then you often end up in a very strong position. Okay, now I'll wake up. Now I'll wake up. Yeah. I want that weaken. But then I don't draw any block cards. Oh. Uh, let's see. We can defend, strike, all out attack to deal 16, but there's a 1 in 2 chance I'll discard the Ascender's Bane and draw it again. If I choke, then defend, we deal 15, but we don't have the chance to discard Ascender's Bane. So we lose 1 damage and probably make up for it with a draw later. I'm going to do that. I believe we have lethal next turn. Is that correct? Let's see, choke is going to add three damage per card. Currently, we can choke, agony, agony, blade dance. That'll be ten plus. Two times one, two. Yeah, that's five per, right? So 10, 20, 25. No, sorry, 23. 40 something. So we have to use the dew pot, I believe. Yeah, it's not, uh, not 50. There's a variety of dupes that work here. You can either dupe the choke or you can dupe the blade dance. Uh, either is fine here. Duping choke is fun, though. The double choke. Get a toy ornithopter healing us when we use potions. That's kind of cool. Suspiciously good infinite blades. Infinite blades goes with choke. Infinite blades goes with mummy hand. Huh. Wouldn't call it good, but it's not bad. I guess I'll try it. Yeah, let's try it. It's a card I very, very rarely take, usually don't think very highly of, but we're doing fun runs today, so it's a good chance to give it a try. Get struck, nerd. Go. 
Good start so far. I got destroyed. Masterful Stab is back. Do I want it? Not really. We have other options for damage now. Wrist Blade incoming. I certainly hope so. But I'm prepared. Draw one, discard one. Needs an upgrade to actually function, though. I don't have an upgrade to give to this card. We'll look for an upgraded one, maybe. In Act 2. Going into Guardian, Footwork seems like an exceedingly reasonable upgrade. I don't anticipate this being a difficult Guardian fight. Uh, although our upfront damage might not be there. Now this is surely good enough with uh, Choke Adrenaline turn one. Surely that is good enough. Well, actually... Hmm. Half tempted to backflip. I think we just need to play the attacks. Can we do 16? Nope. <laughs> no, we can't. All right. We do get slapped, but we at least have quite a bit of block, so it's not too bad. Can only do one damage. The Guardian's health here. We take 14. That's fine. We got the footwork down now. Let's make sure these agonies don't keep coming back. Lay Dance during the defensive mode turns is pretty terrible. Dentagil, thanks so much for the seven months of support. Thank you, thank you. Alright, not too bad. the draw here, but still only take four. That's fine. We'll let the shiv cycle. And I think I'd better play a strike and take one here. We have to prevent uh, Guardian from hitting us with, with the big hit again. Okay, finally a decent choke draw. I think this is going well. We want to chip away at Guardian's health during these defensive mode turns where we can. That looks like Choke is our best damage this turn. Choke, neutralize. Shiv defends. Okay, I think we're good. Kill with Choke, Shiv, all at attack here. We would take 12 and then win. But I think we can get out of the fight with more health by playing Defend and Passing. We have full block next turn guaranteed, and we should be able to kill before it hits us. Hope so, anyway. Yeah, I think we're fine. Okay. Was a little bit worried that I actually had to use the Cultist Potion for this fight, but we managed to save it for Act 2. We have good money now, and we get to add an After Image, Alchemize, or Phantasmal Killer. Wow, this is actually a pretty tough choice. On one hand, Alchemize constantly creating potions is very strong, especially since we heal 5 for each one. On the other hand, after image with mummified hand and blade dance, agony, choke, and infinite blades is going to be a ton of block. 
Did you know that I play games other than Slay the Spire? It's true. Catch me over on Baylor Lord Plays for card games, RPGs, strategy games, and more. Yeah, two very strong options here. Definitely a lot of instinct telling me to take um, Alchemize here, especially with Ornithopter. Especially wanting to defeat Elites in Act 2. However, the Mummified Hand says a lot for the after image here. And so does the fact that I would gleefully add more copies of Blade Dance to this deck. I'm going to grab the after image here. But I could definitely see Alchemize being a very good, very good pick. Oh man, and we get Cage, Collar, or Dripper. What a fun trio of options. With how good this deck is at blocking, especially with 10 block on turn one, we have multiple defensive powers as well. That makes me really like Coffee Dripper, because I think we can get through fights taking damage very consistently. We also have a healing relic in the Toy Ornithopter. It's not a lot, but it should be enough to make this Dripper completely reasonable. Removing two cards, in this case two strikes, is actually not a bad idea. It makes choke work a lot more effectively. But leaves us with a lot less energy to spend. More reliant on the mummy hand. I don't like taking collar here. I think I'd rather... T if we take collar, we're probably going to have to rest at rest sites. And then we'll just be worse off than if we had taken the coffee dripper, where we'll have also gotten the upgrades. So I'm going to take the Coffee Dripper. Being able to play one more upgraded Dexterity Boosted Defend each turn, or another card alongside Choke, makes it a lot better. Greetings, Chosen One. This is a fight that could go relatively badly for us, actually. We're not that good at Chosen with such a defensive deck. However, we are good, that good at Chosen if we draw like this. It's a pretty good turn. I think I want to backflip, as that'll just add another daze to the draw pile and likely draws cards I can't play, although it does do three more damage. Nice, we got a very weak attack from Chosen here. Bummer. Fair enough though. Taking one hit and leaving this fight is pretty fine. Flex Potion's pretty good, too. So we're actually at 47 health, effectively. Take another backflip? Yes. Yes. Definitely. Definitely want as many backflips as we can possibly fit into this deck, pretty much. Um, do we also want Apotheosis Well-Aid Plans? Is that what we want, or do we want Meat on the Bone? Or do we want Frozen Eye? I think it's going to be Apotheosis Well-Aid Plans, personally. Upgrading all of our cards, including our strikes and defends, and being able to retain cards is a double whammy of extra valuable. So I'll take that, and I'll take that. And now I'm poor. So be it. Hmm. 21 health for a book. Thing is, we can't rest. That makes uh, 21 health for a book look a lot less reasonable here. So much less reasonable that I'm not going to read at all. Although the Incaridian would be good. If I knew I was getting that particular one, I think I would take it here. But leave that book. Don't trust our health total. 
They're gonna go um, this way. I'm gonna fight this elite, but not these two. And then probably this one as well. Off to a good start here. Apo. She would hit the wrong freaking card though. Make me take one. Stupid bummy hand. Potion? Not yet. Okay, well, this is just excessive. Hmm. Her image is definitely helping, though. Yeah, we do get another flex pot. I guess two flex pots is better than one cultist potion, though, right? Although we're fighting champ. Do I need this cultist potion as a champ killer? Probably. How's it going, not even Batman? How important is knowing how to build a deck versus your ability, ability to play a given deck? I think there are two halves of the whole. I, I really do think you need to be able to do both and and put them together to successfully perform well at high level Slay the Spire. There are certain strategies you can use to win with more of one or more of the other. For example, there are decks that you can play that are, or you could, there are decks you can build that are quote unquote Id idiot proof uh, because all you have to do is play the same card over and over again, or it doesn't matter what order your cards are played in. And it's possible to, on some level, to use really solid play knowledge to use almost any deck to win. That was actually the basis of our Slay the Streamer challenge, where chat tried to make the worst deck possible, and I tried to win anyway. Um, and that was a, a fun stalemate, usually. I'm going to take a Piercing Whale here, by the way. With the well aid plans, being able to retain a Piercing Whale is very good. Guess I will take a better Flex Pot. Now I feel extra bad for not using the Flex Pot against the Avocado. Oh well. We get a surprise treasure chest with a Lantern. Love it with uh, Silent. And we get to upgrade a card, which is going to be Apotheosis to make that one cheaper. We'll upgrade the well-aid plans next. That way we can retain two, even if we draw it before the Apotheosis. I want to fight an elite next, so that's what we're going to try to do here. I need to damage them both. So I'm going to have to play the all attack, which means discarding defend here. I guess that's okay. Currently planning on holding this flex potion into the elite. We'll, we'll happily use it there. This is a pretty easy fight if we don't get attacked on turn one. So I have no concerns at this time. Oh, the well plans actually makes this choke work. That's nice. Previously, we were having a really hard time with that. But now I can just hold on to Blade Dance until the choke is drawn. So we can do actually big damage in one turn, like so.
That was a lot of damage. Again! Good job, Joke. How's it going, Leon Azaza? Welcome, welcome. Nightmare is here. There's also Backflip Plus, but I think Nightmare is the late game win con for this silence. Nightmare allows us to make duplicates of any other card, which are added into the hand next turn. Because we have Mummified Hand, if we can copy a power, we're going to be able to play a lot of powers basically for free on the following turn. And that is very, very good for scaling. I can also Nightmare uh, Piercing Whale against the Book of Stabbing here. Yeah, do I Nightmare Infinite Blades right now? I'm thinking about it. I guess I can backflip first. Okay, we have Nightmare Footwork if we want it. Or I can skip the Nightmare entirely and just play the powers. Footwork, Infinite Blades, Defend. Sounds more reasonable. If I defend strike or I infinite blades, I might be able to play nightmare here. Yeah, so we can nightmare the piercing well and do three more choke damage. I'll take that. And then we can well lay plans the uh, piercing whales. How's it going, Yachty? Tend to struggle in Act 2. How does one develop a deck to not only be effective in the boss fight in Act 1, but also in the early to middle stages of Act 2? Uh, one subtlety that I think is easy to miss, but we actually saw in action here. Try to keep a potion intact through your Act 1 boss fight. If you're picking your cards well enough to counter the Act 1 boss, the next step is being able to get through the boss while preserving resources. Having one, or better yet, two potions in your potion belt as you go into Act 2 can make the early fights a lot easier. It is almost impossible to consistently make a deck that doesn't get donked by the two thieves on floor 21, for example. If they're your first encounter in Act 2, or Floor 17, whatever it is, if they're your first encounter in Act 2, you'll almost always come up a bit short. But if you have a potion you're willing to use in that fight, it's so much easier. Okay, we did get the well-laid plans plus. We upgraded all these piercing whales, so now we have long-term invulnerability in this fight. That's great. Um, but when it comes to actual card picks, um, some quick, quick notes. Block cards are a lot better if you either upgrade them or add dexterity to them. Frail is very common in Act 2. Frail reduces block on block cards by 25%. But because of rounding, a defend goes from 5 block to 3 block. That's minus 40%. If you're blocking with only basic defense in Act 2, the Frail will take 40% away from your defensive capabilities. But that's not true if you get some better block cards. Grab a common block card or two. These do wonders in Act 2. We're talking um, True Grit, Shrug It Off, Backflip, Leg Sweep, uh, Leap Charge Battery, that kind of stuff. Especially if you can upgrade one or two of those cards, it can really help with uh, managing defenses in Act 2. You won't be able to build a, a very defense-heavy deck. There's different problems with that. Um, and you'll suffer immediately in Act 1. But having a couple good block cards really does go a long way. Let's 
still keep both piercing whales. I'm just going to use one here. That way I can keep the survivor for the big hit turn next turn. Uh, with Frail, eight goes to six. So a five and an eight are both equally penalized by Frail. This ended up being a much easier fight than expected. Mostly because of the piercing whale, though. Okay, I'm gonna use a potion in the next fight for sure. You get Aura Calcum, automatically block six if we don't uh, have any block at the end of turn. Second well laid plans is here. Do I want a second one? I think so, yeah. I think this is a deck that actually wants two well laid plans. Then I don't have to upgrade either of them either. Guarantees pyramid? Yeah, that'd be. I'd rather have uh, another energy than a pyramid, though. A pair of well laid plants. And a ninja scroll on turn one, giving us three shivs. I think I'd rather take the blue key, actually. That could cause overdraw problems with endless agony. Uh, or if we find the bank of preparation later. And given that we can take the sapphire key now, I would prefer to do that. That makes it easier to take a cursed key after champ or something like that. Gilbotron, did you hear about the Silent who invented a new kind of shiv? It's cutting edge technology. No refunds. Bit of my sharp wit for you there. For well laid plans over pyramid because you can do choose to not retain cards. Sometimes that's actually quite important to do. To not retain something. It's not always the best option. Only sometimes. The agony truly is endless. So you have this Flex Potion for the upcoming Elite, Cultist Potion for Champ. Even though we're healing off of potions, I don't really want to use these potions because they are the perfect potions for the next two fights. And if I know I'm winning the next two fights, then the health doesn't matter because we heal at the end of the act. Feels to me like this deck needs even more card draw, so let's give it an Acrobatics. Draw three, discard one. Draw everything. Forever. Let's upgrade this. Good recall. Now let's upgrade Nightmare. Your move, Snake. Neck. 
upgrading the after image does actually seem reasonable too. That would guarantee we get it on turn one, which does actually mean we're relatively likely to get uh, Nightmare Hands. That's a good turn. Four block per card is pretty cool. I could retain these cards, but I don't want to. They're garbage. Get them out of here. Please and thank you. I want to concentrate. I don't think so. I think we're good. All right, who's our elite? Gremlin leader. We got choke turn one. This is already a decent moment for the flex potion. So we could do pretty big damage with that. If this will be nine apiece. Yeah, we could choke the leader and kill both minions with the flex potion. Without the flex potion, I have to put the choke on the wizard, I believe. What kind of better flex turn am I going to get? I don't see one here. Let's do this. Piercing Whale, just in case we get attacked. It could happen. Draw towards Nightmare. There it is. Okay. Nightmare after image? Poor footwork here. Nightmare after image. Still gonna keep Piercing Whale though, not footwork. Because if we do get attacked, it's a times three attack. Do not get attacked, at least not yet. Good. The whammy? Uh, I think that's actually what we wanted. We should be able to block that. Quite easily, in fact. And as for the wizard, they won't last. You can see, though, our damage doesn't really scale that well, which is why we need the cultist potion to get through our act boss. We should hold the blade dance for Joke here. And if you dare attack me, well, guess what? I have an answer to that. Hmm. Although now I have too many cards. It's concerning. this way.
GG. Okay, we got through the fight. We healed a five off the potion. Didn't actually take any real damage. We get another potion and plus one strength via the Vajra. And another way to scale our damage here. In Venom, yet another power. One poison per attack that damages the foe. I'll take it. Dangerously close to having too many powers here. Sounds like a problem for future Baylor, though. We already have Apotheosis, so I don't want it. Dark Shackles is pretty good. Ken Nib is not very good. Harder Move is good. Does the Choke Passive count for Envenom? No, unfortunately. Goodbye, Shackles and Spoon. We definitely do not want Spoon in this deck. Although there are some cool cards that go with a Spoon. Notably, Shivs work with Spoon. And if we draw a handful of Shivs, it's going to be a bad day. Let's upgrade that after image, as previously discussed. All right, jump. Time to get culted. Through both well laid plans on turn one. You know what? I'm just going to play it all, all these powers, that is. That means we're not nightmaring any power. Well, we could nightmare infinite blades. Actually, nightmare infinite blades is really funny here. Will Nightmare Infinite Blades against Champ? I guess. Turkalicious, thanks for the prime sub and the three months of support. Call that a weapon? Start of your turn, play a blade dance. Set up one really good turn here. Although well, currently I'm having uh, draw issues, actually. We have too many cards in our hand now. I only get to draw four. Chain three. Hmm. That's a slightly awkward problem. Let's just go for it. Perish. Bell beast. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Have a free shot, he says. Way ahead of you, buddy. Way, way ahead of you. Impossible. 
GG. Got him. Right now we can take Alchemize and feel pretty good about it. Chat member says, how do we transition into a Time Eater capable deck? We already have the answer to that. Nightmare. Nightmare allows us to copy any card in the deck and then play that multiple times. So all we need is one card that beats Time Eater and then to copy it. Uh, and we probably already have that card in Footwork. If we Nightmare Footwork and go to 12 Dexterity, then it doesn't really matter if Time Eater gets 10 or 12 or 14 Strength because we can make the fight last as long as we need it to in order to slowly whittle down the Time Eater. Adding an Alchemize will definitely make things a lot simpler here. This is a good Nightmare target too, right? We can create multiple potions and heal multiple times with the Nightmare Alchemize. I like that too. Did we get the Runic Pyramid that was summoned? Yes, we do. We do get the Runic Pyramid that was summoned. It's funny. There's Velvet Choker, which I don't think we take. So, uh, how about uh, Ring of the Serpent? Instead of drawing two cards on turn one, we get one card every turn, and that's actually pretty cool. So, Alchemize can create healing potions. Uh, well, yes, actually it can, but also, with the Toy Ornithopter, every potion is a healing potion. But yes, Alchemize can create regeneration potions, just to be clear. Yeah, with two well-aid plans, I don't think we want Runic Pyramid. So let's take Ring of the Serpent here. Any plans to return to the Chimera and Biomes mods? Yeah, um, possibly even tomorrow. I'm not sure what I'm doing tomorrow. But that was one of the things I was thinking about. See how today goes. We have Pyramid at home. All right, I would like to get to another shop because I want to remove another strike. Pretty much my entire motivation. Let's go. Coke. Nightmare on after image, after image, play everything else. I think that's right. Having six space draw is pretty good, actually. You're definitely going to notice it helping in more than a few fights. Finally, another Blade Dance. Yeah, I actually really, really would like another Blade Dance. We're currently struggling to draw the one we have. Yeah, we're weirdly slow. Partially because our damage is not that good. What if I added Sadistic Nature? That's cute. Sadistic Nature and Venom Blades things. It's cute. Would I take an Accuracy? Probably. Pellets. I mean, it is a fun run, right? Actually, yeah, that's a good argument for sadistic nature. Means I can't remove strike, though. But it's fun. Let's try it. 
Wait, who's our act boss? Yeah, awaken one. Oh boy. Cool. I'm sure we'll figure it out. Right? Right? Surely. All will be figured out. Yeah. Poison potion plus five. A nightmare alchemize here. Like that part? It's too many powers. It's too many powers. Give potions. Mediocre. Skill potion is secretly more shiz. Block potion's okay. GG nerd. Calipers! Oh, calipers are definitely good here. At the start of our turn, lose 15 block rather than all of the block. And there are a myriad of ways for us to abuse that. It's including deflect. Glowing Tesseract offers us colorless cards, which can be very good. Like Secret Technique, which can fetch Apotheosis. Panache, which is yet another zero-cost power that does stupid damage to everything. And Master of Strategy, which draws, you guessed it, more cards. Cute. Very cute. I like where this deck is headed. Panache, Envenom... Sadistic nature shivs, I guess. Yeah, why not? Why the heck not? Panache, time to show them how it's done. Love it. Very satisfying. Ancient potions, pretty good. I like an ancient potion for the heart fight block uh, vulnerable there, although I really like the flex potion to give us some more damage. I'll lose the block potion here. The power. Did the devs code all at attack to always discard a sender's bane if it's in hand? No, I think they made it target whatever card you're most emotionally attached to. Seems to be. Not sure how they did that, but it's really impressive. Six hundred and fifty hit point giant head. Okay, let's uh, let's test our damage. Are we actually any good at it? Is the question. A 
could use both potions to make this fight a lot easier, and probably should, given how easily we can make more potions. Let's do that. Nerd is definitely concerning at the moment. And they're over the first boss. They are the first boss. Super spooky. Fifty-six damage from Panache, by the way. <laughs> that's that's too much. That's too much. We can gain strength at rest sites up to three times. That definitely would help. That can give us three more strength. Traction plus. I don't know about that. Seems iffy slash unreliable, but also could be kind of amazing if it made a block card. With after image and panache. You know what? We're having fun today. Let's keep having fun. I said, let's keep having fun. Why are you here? With well laid plans, it should be not too bad to prevent this foe from giving us a curse, at least. We can do that pretty consistently. At least that's the hope. Got myself cursed there. Indeed, almost. Swap some potions out here. I think poison potion's pretty weak. Gambler's Brew is great, though. And Tropic Brew is surely decent as well. All right, let's keep those two. Cultist Potion. That can also help us deal with the Awakened One, right? Very appropriate, actually. Okay, let's drink the Entropic Brew, see what's inside it. A Strength Potion, discard that, pick up the Cultist Potion. There's the Leg Sweep. Okay. I was just thinking we don't have quite enough Weaken for Awaken One to feel comfortable. With a Leg Sweep? Now we do. Now we can keep the Awaken One weak full time. And so things ought to be a little bit easier. Neko's Skull is pretty hype, making Invenom literally twice as strong. 
I like where this is headed. Do I want Madnesses? I don't think so. Deck has already got too many cards. Struggling to draw them all. So I will not take Madnesses. Not today. Nightmare the after image against Transients. Alright, good luck to us. Secretly technique the adrenaline. Make a new card. Upgrade that new card. Draw new cards. Alright, full block achieved. Sadistic nature. Full damage unlocked. We get 85 block. Easy peasy. If we can do something like this against the Awakened One, that's when things get easy. At least that's our hope. What is even happening? It's like we're playing a Dead Branch deck, but we don't have Dead Branch. It's just one of everything, stupid nonsense, all procking off each other. We'd love to see it. And I'm going to lift, too. <laughs> All right, so we've had first leg sweep, yes, but what about second leg sweep? Have I ever killed Nemesis on the invulnerable turn? Many times. We've even eaten Nemesis while it's intangible using a feed card. I've done that by having an infinite and dealing hundreds of one damage to the Nemesis. I've also done it by just leaving the Nemesis on one health during the non invuln turn and then poking it for one while invulnerable. So a couple of ways to do that. I wonder if that was actually secret technique for Nightmare. Whatever. It's all good. potions quite a lot let's take one more acrobatics for the awaken one fight we're gonna need to be able to draw through all of the powers that we're not choosing to play immediately and an acrobatics ought to help with that at least i hope so D-block. Way more than 50 block. 80 block.
so many things proccing at the same time. Blur. Block is not removed at the start of your next turn. That is also welcome. It's like an additional 15 block if we're overblocking. All right, let's lift again. Since we have the Apotheosis, I don't think we need to upgrade anything in the deck. So we can have now three Strength Silence, plus all the other nonsense, which is pretty delightful, actually. All right, we got Footwork after Image Panache on turn one. I'll play all three of these to start. Again, we don't want to play too many powers necessarily against the Bird Nerd here, but we do want to play the defensive ones at minimum. We do want to kill off the minions, so I think Panache is going to be helpful with that. Being able to keep the Awakened One weakened, the Awakened One will help a bit. Let's see, and I owe the chat a dad joke courtesy of Mila. In Twitch chat. Oh yeah, we're gonna play Willy Plans too. Did you hear that the silent is immaculate? at setting out spreads of dessert custards. She won an award for her well-laid flans. No refunds. Oh yeah, wasn't I supposed to use cultist boost in here? Maybe I... I think I still do, yeah. Cultist was for this fight. I just kind of forgot about it because I got asked for a joke. <laughs> not often enough talked about difficulties of streaming, having to stop what you're doing and think about a random joke in the middle of something very stressful. Not so easy. Here we nightmaring adrenaline. I don't really think like that nightmaring a power in this fight is a good idea, so yes. We'll nightmare adrenaline here. I think it's correct to still play in Venom. You're live, right? Right. Give me double acrobatics then. Oh. All right, we'll play in Venom. That's the last power. Enjoy your poison. So no sadistic nature, no infinite blades this fight. No second well laid plans either. We can play all the powers once we get to phase two though. That at that point, the Awakened One will no longer gain strength for what we do. For now, all we need is some poison. play leg sweeps if I have no targets. Whoops. Terrible. Maybe the blur then. Not even bothering to whale trick. We don't need to do that nonsense here. This fight is easy.
the damage. Numbers. Wow. Good fight. GG. So, how do we beat Time Eater with this deck? Hopefully, killing Awakened One's Phase 2 in a single turn gave you an idea of how this could go down. Hmm. Although I drew Footwork and After Image before Nightmare. I guess that's fine. I don't have to Nightmare a defensive power, after all. There are, as they say, other options. Can I use that now. I think I'm going to play Infinite Blades. That seems unwise in this fight. Fine-ish. Drawdown is slowing our ability to get through the deck. Here we go, though. Couple well-laid plans, finally. Secret tech for Master of Strategy. Get me deeper into the deck here. Get rid of these. We're drawing towards our powers. definitely call this an awkward draw order, but despite that, we haven't taken any damage yet. Now nah, I'm going to play Infinite Blades. Just trust me. I'm also going to get a different potion here. Sadistic. So now, every time we inflict a status effect upon the time meter, we'll deal an additional 28 damage. Twice in that case. This choke applied two debuffs. And then some. Poor time eater. What a way to go. Doesn't even get to rewind time because of how much damage that was. Rickon80, thanks for 65 months. Keeping the streak alive at 65. Wish I could offer you a senior's discount. Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread could be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of all this silliness? Prepare your sadistic nature, dealing 2319. Have I been here before? Let's get the third lift. Now we have four strength. The strong silent type. We could start out with poison on enemies. We could have another adrenaline. We could remove a card. Hand of greed is a little bit late, isn't it? With the Sneko Skull, the funnel is actually five poison to start. That's kind of cool. I think Adrenaline Remove is probably our best option. 
get to exactly 40 cards. No, that's still 41 cards. Current potions are fine. I could go double gambler's brew, but whatever. We're fine. Time to squash everything with our ridiculous deck. Perfect. Lose the blade dance of all things? Sure. Sheaves. Keep these to re this card blocks next turn, I guess. Seems fine. Good. Secret tech. Uh, I want to nightmare something else. Though seek nightmaring adrenaline is perfectly fine here. Venom? Yeah, I will nightmare the uh, adrenaline, I guess. That's fine. Now we get sadistic nature. Of course we do. Shenanigans ensue. Turn around. Scream at them to death. G. Well, that was stupid. I loved it. We don't yet have every power in the game, so I vote we take Tools of the Trade so that we can touch buff bars with a heart. Let's do it. Double unupgraded Willy plans turn one. Good enough in my book. No need to potion just yet. What is this? That's worth rotating. Definitely. Oops. I think leg sweep was as well. Whatever. I like it. Oh. Oh. I guess I'll nightmare unupgraded panache in this fight. Cool with that. there for the moment. 
This one's hard to block. This may require our Gambler's Brew, actually. In fact, we could nightmare these panaches we made and come back to them to try to do better on this turn. Let's do that. I want to get up my defenses ASAP. Okay, that helps a bit. I want to use Nightmare, so there's no reason not to infinite blaze, or uh, not, not to alchemize, rather. Another Gambler's Brew. Interesting. Inner Void. Okay. I don't love this turn. Take it, though. Secret tech for a blade dance, get more damage done here. Yeah, that almost caps it. Okay. This ain't so bad. All these panaches keep coming from. Never ending. Some kind of waking nightmare. Poor heart, we knew ye well. You are toast here. These ships doing way too much damage. 15 a pop, plus another 52 every time I play. Five cards. That's a lot of damage. GG, Mr. Heart. GG. Good try, but not good enough. Smell you later, nerd. Ooh, GG. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And don't forget to check out Baylor Lord Plays for variety content. Click the blue Baylor icon to subscribe.